Editorial Content Director for Executive Programs at Hanley Wood. And uh, I'm delighted to bring you this all-star discussion of the Cradle to Cradle Certified Products Program and how it fits into real-world projects. Just a few key facts about Cradle to Cradle and what it looks for in a product. That it's made with materials that are safe for humans and the environment. Designed so all ingredients can be reused safely by nature or industry. Assembled and manufactured with renewable, non-polluting energy. Made in ways that protect and enrich water supplies. And made in ways that advance social and environmental justice. I'm especially honored to have with us today the co-founder of Cradle to Cradle and renowned expert in sustainable design, William McDonough of McDonough Innovations. Bill, have a few words for us. I think, hi everybody. I'm really privileged to be here with this group and you want to hear from them. Let me just say one thing about transparency. I'd like to bring transparency to transparency. <laughs> Transparency is the absence of color. It's the seeing through things and deeply into them. And the notion of going beyond just superficial information and lists to going down to the parts per million, parts per billion, is what transparency is about. And it's a real privilege to have been working with people like Jay Bullis, who's the who's scientist at NBC and the Institute. Um, who is represented here by Stacy with me, um, and, and watch this heroic effort to get down to that parts per million, parts per billion level for ecological and human health. And so that part of it I just think is a privilege to see, and literally to see that deeply. So uh, the idea that we would see deeply and we would see broadly is really critical. We see at the molecular, binocular, kind of an, and telescopic. And the people here are people who see very deeply, but also very widely. So let you hear what they see. Thank you. Great. And next, we'd like to hear from Stacy Glass. So Bill, on your, on your right. Stacy is Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute. And uh, she wants to give us a little orientation on what the Institute does. Thank you, Claire. Uh, the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute is the, um, the home of the Cradle to Cradle Pro Certified Product Standard. And the Cradle to Cradle Certified Product Standard is a multi-attribute system that looks at what's in, it, what's in a product, material health, and how it's designed uh, for infinite reutilization, material reutilization, and then how it's manufactured with respect for water stewardship, clean energy, and social fairness. And through this multi-attribute program, we get products that are not only uh, good for uh, people and the environment, but are made in ways that respect humans and the environment. And so I'm uh, pleased to be here today with our, our panelists who are going to talk more about what they like about the Cradle to Cradle Certified Program. Great. Great. Well, perfect segue is we have, uh, as you can see, a whole row of gentlemen who are going to tell us about how they use Cradle to Cradle in their organization. <laughs> Maybe we'll get Michelle up here to equalize things a little bit. Um, how they use uh, Cradle to Cradle in their organizations and in their projects and why they chose it and why they feel it's important. And maybe Steve, since you've got a microphone there, do you want to go ahead? Steve Glenn, Living Homes. So we, uh, we build uh, modern uh, LEED Platinum Certified Prefabricated Homes. We built this home in partnership with Make It Right and Cradle Cradle Institute and the International Building Well Institute. And we are targeting a group of consumers that are variously called the creative class or the uh, cultural creatives who really value design, health, and sustainability. So they're chopping at Whole Foods and driving Priuses and reading Dwell and Wired and doing yoga and uh, wearing Patagonia and so <laughs> buying from Ikea, maybe some piece from Design Within Reach. So lots of products that, that are built or operate in a healthy and, and sustainable way that reflect the kind of form and functionality that these folks um, value. There aren't many production builders who yet focus on those folks. We're, we're trying to do it. Make It Right certainly is doing that for, for their projects. 
we're a small company, and we believe our consumers actually really care deeply about the things that we put in the homes. As a small company, we don't have the ability to go research all of the products we use. There are a lot of products used in these company in, 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 in these homes. And that's why it's critical for us that there are folks like Cradle to Cradle Institute who are doing the hard research, and it's hard at times, and have set up a program that allows manufacturers to get certified. And frankly, it makes it easy for us to then say, great, this is a product we can use because we know it's a healthy product it's built in an appropriate way. And we believe and this may be controversial, but I think Cradle to Cradle will achieve the kind of brand recognition that LEED has. When we started eight years ago, nobody, nobody knew about LEED homes that we spoke to. Now, they come to us and they say, oh, we know you do LEED Platinum Homes, we want a LEED Platinum Home. And I think that's gonna happen with Cradle to Cradle too. Thank you very much, Steve. And now we have uh, Anthony Rabbits from Google. Hi, I'm, I'm Anthony with Google's Real Estate and Workplace Services Group, and we create, we, we build and operate Google's offices around the globe for, for all of our employees, and we're really focused on creating places that support the, the health and well-being of our people um, and helping them to perform at their best every day for Google, not just for Google, but um, for themselves and for their families. Uh, and that's tough to do. We've we found that there are, it turns out there are a lot of things uh, in the built environment that don't support our health and well-being and our performance. Uh, so Cradle to Cradle has been a resource for us for a, for a long time. We started buying Cradle to Cradle products probably almost 10 years ago when they first started coming out. It's been really exciting to see uh, both the marketplace and uh, Cradle to Cradle evolve over that period of time. And we have so many more options available today than we did then, and the standard itself now being housed in the Institute and being really an open and transparent standard, and watching uh, it align with other industry standards and watching those be part of LEED now as well, and seeing how the pace of that transformation is really picking up, and now there's this clear path between different standards that link together um, where we can find products both that are really aspirational and have achieved great things over a long period of time and have achieved those cradle to cradle certifications and others that are at the beginning of their journey where they're starting to be more transparent with their customers about what's in our products and what's it made out of. And it helps us as consumers make much better decisions that align with our values and our priorities. Thank you, Anthony. Now we have uh, Dan Probst of Jones Lang LaSalle. Dan, tell us about your implementation of Cradle to Cradle. Okay, uh, Dan Probst with uh, JLL. Uh, we're a global real estate services firm, so we provide transactions management, project and development services, property and facility management. Uh, around the globe, we do about $22 billion in project and de development work. We manage about 3 billion square feet of property uh, around the globe, and I lead our energy and sustainability services group. <clears throat> our group is designed to help our clients achieve their goals for energy and sustainability, whatever those goals might be. So sometimes it's helping them reduce their environmental footprint by shrinking their real estate footprint because they're using space more efficiently and implementing new office standards or work from home programs. Sometimes it's doing a building energy retrofit with our project management group, or sometimes it's just helping them manage and operate their buildings uh, more efficiently. Historically, the goals of our clients and the, and the things that we do have been focused on things like energy, waste, and water, because those are, those are easy to measure, they're easy to identify, and there are standards around uh, usage of, of energy, for instance. And the drivers for our clients have been things like cost savings, or sometimes it's branding, or sometimes it's achieving a certain greenhouse gas emission goal reduction. Uh, but an interesting thing happened along the way as we're implementing these green buildings and improving buildings for our clients, uh, which is that the industry discovered that a lot of these things that we do to green up the building also make it a, a better and healthier and more productive work environment. And uh, that's led to a lot of interesting discussion because suddenly uh, health and productivity in a lot of cases kind of rise to the top of the priority list. The way that we look at it is if we're helping a client save energy, we're impacting roughly a $3 a square foot line item for them. If we help them use space more efficiently so they can own or lease less space and reduce their environmental footprint at the same time, 
we're impacting that rent line or maybe about $30 a square foot. But if we can make their employees more productive, then we're talking about $300 a square foot. So uh, health and productivity kind of quickly went to the top of the list. And that's where materials come into play because they have a big impact on health and productivity in an office environment. You don't want materials in there that uh, are producing gases and things of that sort. Uh, but it's also an area that historically has been difficult for us to focus on because there hasn't been an easy way to kind of identify and measure. And along comes Cradle to Cradle with a, a, a program that enables us to, to take the guesswork out of that and help us to know uh, the products that can, can contribute to a healthy work environment. And so now those project managers, the ones that are controlling that $22 billion in spend, have a much easier way uh, to, uh, to sort out the, the, the product uh, side of the equation. And I, I like to liken them to uh, uh, the most interesting man in the world because our project managers don't always get to make the buying decision, but when they do, they prefer cradle to cradle products. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Michael Dean, Turner Construction. Hi, I'm Turner Construction Company's uh, Chief Sustainability Officer. So. Uh, I was actually hired to help grow Turner's green building business about 10 years ago. Um, we, we're longtime uh, uh, proponents and supporters of sustainable construction since 2009. More than half of our work in place by volume, dollar volume, has been lead. We, we're about to hit our 400th lead certified project. So we're very interested in, in uh, being at the, at the head of the curve uh, on what is best practice. and. Uh, we periodically do research, uh, and we've, we've done a research piece this year that follows what you've heard a minute ago. Uh, much more interest uh, in uh, human health and well-being, indoor air quality, health and productivity of workers, uh, and we, we know that a lot of that has to do with the materials, and so there's much more of an interest in uh, transparency and disclosure of materials and avoidance of materials that are known to be harmful. And there are a number of emerging uh, tools and standards out there uh, to do that. Uh, we happen to be the entity where we're sort of the end of the line. Uh, a, a building is designed, built, or designed and specified to achieve certain goals and avoid certain things, and it all lands on us to execute. So we need tools to help us avoid uh, materials that have negative impacts, and Cradle to Cradle is a, is a perfect tool to do that. So we're looking to encourage uh, product manufacturers and materials uh, manufacturers uh, to be transparent and to, uh, to get their products and materials specified so that we know that what we're executing for our clients uh, will, will provide them the kind of environments that, that will make them more productive and uh, less uh, likely to become sick. Uh, and so we're looking for those products those cradle-to-cradle -cradle products uh, that we can that we can recommend to our clients. That's great, Michael. You can't underestimate the power of the of the big customer pushing for that kind of change. Uh, Tom Darden of Make It Right. Have your attention, please. Uh oh. Happy hour in the hall. Now begun. <laughs> please help yourself to open the door throughout the hall. Drink tickets may be redeemed for T Tom lives in New Orleans, so that was especially <laughs> time. They like to party here. We I'll already started our happy hour here, but uh, I'll go, fast. go ahead, Tom. Um, so uh, I uh, work with Make It Right, and our, our mission is to build cradle-to-cradle inspired homes, buildings, and communities for people in need. So it was important enough to, uh, to us that, we, that we, we put it straight in our mission statement. Uh, and we started building homes here in the Lower Ninth Ward um, that, that uh, Brad and Brad Pitt, our uh, founder, along with Bill, um, decided to, um, to help Lower Ninth Ward residents who lost everything during the storm um, come back and rebuild, but rebuild something better than what, what was there before, rebuild really the best houses that we possibly could. Uh, and so for us, in addition to trying to utilize as many cradle-to-cradle -cradle products as we could, we also tried to, to uh, design um, a house that was inspired by cradle-to-cradle uh, as a de design philosophy, sort of like Brad Pitt was inspired when he read Cradle to Cradle um, to call Bill and, and invite him to, to um, help uh, address the needs of the Lower Ninth Ward. So um, in our houses, we, we do that in 
energy production, so we try to produce as much energy as we can. Uh, we try to conserve as much water as we can, retain as much on, on the site as possible, recycle um, what we can. Uh, we designed the house specifically for the, the environment that it's, that it's in and the risks uh, thereof. And um, we design around the needs of the residents. It's sort of our primary design focus. Um, and we try to utilize as many sort of passive design features as we can. Um, in a lot of ways, similar to what you see in historic New Orleans design, right? So sort of high ceilings, um, large windows, maximizing cross ventilation, covered porches for shading. Um, and then, of course, we try to use as many cradle to cradle certified products as we can. And overall, we're, we're looking to use products that are healthy and safe for people and the environment. And so when we were challenged to, to build uh, as close as we could to a cradle to cradle home, that meant that we had to uh, begin evaluating products that were, that were not yet cradle to cradle certified. Of course, we knew the ones that were certified um, and we set out to use uh, any of those that were, that were uh, affordable off the shelf um, uh, as our um, homes are all affordable. But we also needed to uh, evaluate other materials that we were using um, that hadn't been cradle to cradle certified yet. Sometimes doing that, working with the manufacturer, sometimes not. Um, sometimes the manufacturer may not have even been aware that we were doing this, but we started working with MBDC to develop um, a tool that's now utilized um, by the Institute um, is a quick assessment, a way to sort of get a quick feel for um, how close something could possibly be based on what information was publicly available um, to cradle to cradle so that when we were choosing uh, between different uh, product options, um, we would, we would uh, of course, lean towards the one that was closer to cradle to cradle. And what's been great about working with the Institute now is that we've got a reciprocal relationship and that, that we are able to refer product companies that we, that we work with closely, like, for example, Benjamin Moore, who um, this week was certified um, cradle to cradle. Um, so, uh, and then we also are able to, to benefit from the, the new companies that the Institute is working with to get certified. So then um, we're aware of those new products as they come online and we can integrate them into, into our houses. That's terrific. Um, so it brings to mind, since we have so many really big customers up on stage, do you have like a shopping list of things you wish, of product categories you wish would go and get already cradle to cradle certified. What would you like to see on that short list of, you know, get there? Drywall. That'd be number Drywall, one for us. Drywall, says Stacy. That'd definitely be number one for us. And what did you say, Steve? That's number one for Drywall. us. Drywall. Drywall manufacturers get thee to cradle to cradle. Uh, anything else that's a sort of big gap that you can think of? Plumbing, maybe. Plumbing. Plumbing, great. So uh, plumbers as well, uh, plumbing manufacturers. More siding. More siding would be good. There, See, we got Nichiwa, our wish list growing. There, there is a siding company, Nichiwa, that has cradle to cradle certified product, but, but more like choice more. means love James Hardy to do it. And great, name names. Uh, so, uh, and also the more products within a category that you have, the greater the affordability because you are able to choose your not having to go with just one product. It's great. Well, maybe uh, in just to wrap everything up, we can have Bill tell us a little bit just about how Cradle to Cradle came to be. In is a this nutshell. Give us a little. Up? This is our wrap up. So right. we'll give you I'd the last like to, word. If I could, mm -hmm. just before I do that, sure. I'd like to honor someone I see out there, Bill Browning. Do I see you out there? Are you still out there? He's hiding. <laughs> Bill Browning is one of the there founders of LEAD. And it's good to see you. Thank you. This is one of the great pioneers. So thank you for being here. Um, in August, I had the privilege of being in China with the new head of the China Association for the Circular Economy. And I am now the chair of the Meta Council for Circular Economy for the World Economic Forum. So. Circular economy, which is being based on cradle to cradle, which is very exciting, uh, is now one of the primary agendas of the 1,300 largest companies in the world. That's exciting. But also in China, their five-year plan, and the new one will also be called the circular economy. And they've asked me to help put in an implementation that they can do and a way to enforce something because it's really not working. And when I met with the head of the Circle Economy Association of China, she said, we do reduce, reuse, recycle. 
and yet our air is still polluted, our water is in trouble, and we have just declared 19.4% of our agricultural land toxic to food. So, we're gonna carry Cradle to Cradle, which is a defined system with lots of words you can't pronounce, <laughs> and only a few here understand at the depth of the molecule, but there it is. And what we're gonna hope is that China will look at this and say, make it so. And then to enforce it, they can say, show us your cradle to cradle certification. And it's much bigger than material health. It's a real, it's about third party assessment. It's about verification. It's about constant improvement. You come back and get recertified and if you haven't improved, you can lose your certification. So I think it's a really exciting moment and as we see people taking up this methodology, it really is all roads lead to the institute where you can get certified across multi-attributes and do the real sustainability the real way, and we're real excited about it, so. Yeah. Terrific. Leaders, yeah. A real honor to have you all as leadership um, sending the, the kinds of messages to the marketplace that are really going to accelerate market transformation. Thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you all for your work. Thank you.